Good evening everyone and today we are going to make a battery for our 286 retro PC because on the main board there was a rechargeable battery once but it leaked and the previous owner rightfully snipped it off um, the board still works but every time you boot up after you disconnect from power you will get a CMOS error there are no settings stored like what graphics card is installed, how much memory, what's the time, what hard disk is in there. So that's a bit annoying. The board still functions, but yeah, um, it's definitely annoying. So with only a little bit of money, we can build our own new battery because those rechargeable nickel cadmium batteries are actually prone to leakage. And even if I could buy a new one, I wouldn't want it on there. But instead we will make an external battery module and um, yeah, we're using one of these little boards here that you can use to build your own little things. Also a, a lithium battery, 3.6 volts, which is uh, the correct range. So 3 volts should be enough. However, this is a non-rechargeable battery, so we need to protect it. And this is what this diode here is for. Basically, the diode will allow um, the battery to power the CMOS chip, but not allow charging current to go into the battery. There will be a voltage drop, so every every diode has a forward voltage. And the, maybe I can show this. Let's let's try to zoom in because the diode is really tiny. Um, let's tried like this okay here you can see it so probably you can you can make out that there is a black band here at the end of the diode um, which is basically where the negative or the um, anode is and the cathode is on the other end where the positive side is hope I didn't mix it up but uh, this bar here is definitely pointing away from the plus. So basically we will put it in series with the battery like this. Can you see that? Oh yeah, should probably zoom out. And we can measure the forward voltage drop by putting our positive lead or probe on, on the anode or the, and on the cathode. Yeah, we see there's a 0.55 volt drop which is okay that's uh good so this will drop the voltage of this thing to about three volts which should be enough to actually power everything that we need we will put some headers in and both on the main board and here and connect both via these jumper wires so I can replace them when needed, make them longer and then stow away the whole thing in a neat and tidy place. Also I can cut this later with a knife so that's very useful of these things. This is the back side, this is where the solder comes and this is the front basically where you place your components. So it's very easy, you don't have to etch anything. And what I want to do is basically I want to slip this over here solder it to the PCB and then run the diode. Let me see where's the positive. Here's the positive on the diode here. Let me just across here. Um, put in a jumper on the other side obviously. And then I have already my circuit. Then I put two more headers on the main board and that's it. Um, I also have some little jumper wires here if I need them and I can basically put them on there to, bit more, to be a bit more flexible on the placement of the components without having to put too much solder on there because you can also make solder bridges. Okay, so I will start assembling this now and when I'm done or in between I will pause and show you the results and explain a bit more if needed.
It is done, I would say. So we have the diode over here, and the traces on the back are pretty simple. Um, basically, the minus, the negative runs from here to here to this pin, and the positive runs through the diode to the positive end of the battery. And if I go here with my black and my red lead, um, how can we put it so that you can see it? Maybe like this. I think so. Um, and I put it next to each other. It's 3.47 volts. So maybe my device is not quite as accurate. But if I probe the battery here, it says 3.67 or 66 volts. So yeah, there's definitely voltage drop. Not as high as I would assume. Maybe that's depending on the load. I'm not an expert on diodes actually. But this should work. So let's put a red jumper wire on the positive lead and a black one on the negative header lead. So I think there was something going wrong here. Cheap, cheap cables. Yeah, this is much better. This holds very well. We can test again. The multimeter and later as I said I can cut this off to make it fit better so all right you should see something here um, just stick it in here and we see the 3.47 volts if I manage to get the contact anyway this looks good so next part is to actually put two little headers, let's break this off, to our main board and let's hope we don't destroy anything there because this will be the most difficult part. So see you in a second and then we can fire the thing up and see if everything blows and I need to have another board or something. All right, it's done. So you probably didn't see much in there, but uh, let me zoom in. This part of the board is a little bit corroded due to the leakage, and I will also still have to maybe scrub it off with some isopropyl alcohol. But I managed to put in, I think you can see it like that, um, three header pins, um, because there were two holes at the positive side. So I thought, nah, let's just put in two at a time and one on the minus because it's more stability over here due to the fact um, that there were also two solder pads there. Well, this is also not cleaned up properly now, but I think this should work. Um, cross your fingers that it will not blow up. <laughs> I guess you will be amused if it does, but well, these boards are actually harder and harder to get and would be a shame if it breaks down. All right, so, um, yeah, let me zoom out. This is the board again in all its glory. Let's put it this way around on the table. Yes, we will put something insulating below because there are actually some, uh, yeah, leftovers of metal from the soldering. I will wipe it off and I'll see you in a second. I have set up the machine again. All right, here we are. So everything's wired up. 
the battery is connected to the positive and negative terminal. Um, we have VGA, we have power, black is in the middle. You always need to make sure that with AT connectors black and black meet in the middle, otherwise your whole board goes bang. Um, keyboard, VGA, battery, everything's there, we don't want anything more. So let's switch on the power supply and switch on the power switch, cross your fingers. Nothing went bang so far. And we see a picture. Well, that's good. Let's grab the keyboard, shall we? So I do. Uh, let's turn off the scan lines. Yeah, that's better. Um, let's run setup. Okay. So far it didn't complain about... Ah, oh, here, CMOS system options not set. Well, we run the setup. June... Uh, what is it? June 20th. Two thousand and eighteen. Well, I think nobody back then assumed that we would be running this machine in this year. And right now it's uh, around twenty-two thirty. Yeah, so it's already getting late. But we want to try this primary display. We don't have anything installed except for keyboard and VGA. So let's write this to the CMOS. This will of course work now, but the interesting part will be if we basically disconnect the power supply after turning this off. So let's skip the memory check. And this should lead to boof, no basic or something, because there are no hard disk controllers, no floppy disk controllers. Yeah, let's just turn it off at this point. Um, yeah, you... We'll see a static screen now. I will switch back to the video of my smartphone um, and I will cut the power here. I will take a short break um, because it might take some minutes for the CMOS to lose its contents. And in theory, we should see that it doesn't lose the contents um, because other, uh, all the other times when I disconnected the power supply it won't hold its settings, but now it should. So, see you in a jiffy, and um, let's cross our fingers. All right, um, here we are. Let's see if we can make this work. It's now roughly 15 minutes later. So, during that time, the CMOS should have lost all its information. So, let's see what happens. Nothing blew up in the meantime. It's still seemingly fine. Image is there. That's very good. So let's skip the memory test if possible and see if it held. Oh my god. Yes, it held. So I would say this is a successful fix. Awesome. I wouldn't have guessed that it works on the first try. So um, next thing to do is to cut the PCB into a smaller chunk and make some kind of enclosure probably, because you don't want to short circuit this lithium cell, because it will be, well, pretty violent, I guess. So I will be thinking of something, maybe I can ask a friend to 3D print a case or something. That would be an option. Yeah, but in the meantime, I'm very happy that this worked out. I wish you a good evening. Please share, like and subscribe if you want to and hopefully see you next time. Good night.